TechX Media is an initiative set up by digital media agency Seven Things Media to unite some of their leading brands with a selection of the brightest UK tech startups. Paired against each other, our hand-picked startups will pitch to a panel of expert judges who will choose a winner on behalf of the brands. On the judging panel, we have Wayne Harris, agency partner at Facebook, Jennifer Roebuck, non-executive director at Seven Things Media, Mark Pearson, founder of Fuel Ventures, and the founder and CEO of Seven Things Media, Chris Bishop. First to pitch for makeup brand, Charlotte Tilbury, Joel from Grabble. Grabble is the best and most simple way to buy fashion on your phone. We've created an amazing personalized app that shows you a feed of products one after the other. If you like something, you just simply swipe it to the right and we save it for later. And the best thing is, if it goes on sale, we can let you know. So why is it important for Grabble to work with Charlotte Tilbury? Well, we feel that Grabble has a similar designing uh, user base of a similar age, a similar demographic, and a similar spend on both beauty and fashion. So what is Grabble? So Grabble the app is the ability to swipe through a personalized feed really, really easily, but we also curate content every day. So it might be a weekend away in Berlin, something to wear to meet your boyfriend's parents. And the idea is shoppable content. Everything you swipe to the right, we save you for later. But the easiest thing is that you can seamlessly buy items. Because some of our team already <coughs> use Charlotte Tilbury, they know that Charlotte Tilbury has a great Instagram account because they already follow it. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to say, look, you're creating amazing social content that people really, really enjoy. Can you make it shoppable? Can you make it exciting? So we've noticed on the Instagram campaign, it involves influencers being made up by Charlotte Tilbury for awards. They get a lot of engagement on that page. But then next to the image, we're listing all the items that are being sold in the image, which is boring. You're not going to go on your phone and search for them. So we came up with a Shop Charlotte campaign to make these amazing images shoppable for all the Charlotte Tilbury fans and all the users of Gravel already. So how do we do this? Well, it's quite easy. You've already taken a strong image for Instagram. All you have to do is upload it to Gravel, and then we can add the products that have been involved. And then for your users, it's as simple as clicking a link, it will open Gravel on that image that you've seen on Instagram. You click on it, and then we can show you all the products behind it. And then you can just swipe through it really, really easily. So I want that, I don't want that. And everything that you see that you like, we've stored your credit card details so you can buy it at a tap. So if you think about the conversion between just being able to tap on the product and buy it, or reading it on Instagram, typing it into the internet, going and finding it, it's completely different. And it's a great experience. We're going to, through Gravel, build hype around the campaign by getting people within the social sphere to start um, tweeting and posting to Facebook their favorite Charlotte Tilbury products with the Shop Charlotte hashtag. And we'll turn that into a large competition, which is we will be able to buy those products for you. So we can get the reach there, build up a bit of excitement about the campaign. So with the growth of Gravel, we've shown that we're really good at using social media as a way to attract users and to influence people about Gravel. And we want to use that same ability that we have to create an amazing campaign with Charlotte Tilbury along the lines that they would really love and then create something really beneficial in a partnership going forward, which is saying you're the first forward-looking makeup brand that has made Instagram shoppable for your users. You mentioned the personalised nature of the feed. Yeah. Um, how, what drives that personalisation to it for a user? Because of the uh, way we've decided to create the app, users get to swipe whether they want to keep something or not. So it creates a binary decision. Okay. So we get an amazing amount of data. So if you think every time someone swipes, I want to keep that or I don't want that, we then collect, you know, we know the age, we know the gender, okay. we know the brand, we know the color, we know the category, we know the style. So it builds up a huge amount of data that then you can use to create a personalized feed of products. Mm -hmm. Great pitch, well done. Uh, why wouldn't the brand do most of this themselves and drive their own transactions versus using you? You can't go from driven from Instagram into a mobile website, which is slow, boring, that you have to type things into. We're saying create something great for your users. You know, we're going to share, obviously, you can take most of the revenue. All we're doing is creating an amazing experience for your users, and that's what we want to do. We're saying that this is the way that content should be delivered on a mobile phone. Your users love Instagram because the looks are great. Just give them something great to be able to buy something from. Yeah, that makes sense. Next into the boardroom is Odira from Viewsy. I'm Odero Mezoke, founder and CEO of Yuzi. And Yuzi is a location analytics and performance management platform 
What that means is essentially we help retailers track customer behaviour in the physical world. So I'd like to talk to you today about how we're trying to change the way that businesses in the physical world and retail interact with consumers. And what we've developed today is a tool which, using data generated from the physical world, analyzes customer behavior and presents it, presents it back to a retailer through a range of tools such as the dashboard app and other ways so you can actually manage your business more effectively in a retail environment. On our journey, we've had the pleasure uh, and, the, and the opportunity to work with uh, retailers across a range of different industries, but we've particularly enjoyed working with those in fashion. And as you'll notice, uh, our, our, our product is really sculpted around the needs of understanding a digital consumer. So in the health and beauty, in the fashion industries, those are particularly well suited to benefit in, from the data that we create. If you can imagine for a second that in this room, we're not just people. We're actually generating data at the same time. So what I've just done right now is I've spoken for a certain amount of time, perhaps I waited outside for a certain amount of time, and so on. Imagine if you could turn that into numbers so as to understand what's happening with me right now. That's exactly what Fusey does. I'd like to pass this to you. So if you take a look there, you can see marked in red. That red shows you a customer dwell time and the negative customer experience that's created. That essentially shows you the service levels that they're receiving based on the number of staff available to serve them at the time. And as I move members of staff and reallocate them to actually serve customers, you can see in real time how your customers are being served. And this is generated by measuring the time people spend in queues, as well as the number of staff available to serve customers. Our technology can tell in real time how many people are available to serve your customers as they're walking through the door. And that's very, very important. If you can track that, you can help your concessions understand through KPIs how to serve customers most effectively. And that's pretty powerful. We had one customer recently report a 1515 improvement in sales within two months from having Vuzi installed, simply because our product exposed data that was previously invisible to them that allowed them to take new actions and extend in opening hours and justify the investment in adding additional staff. And the results spoke for themselves. Have you had any experience working with concessions before? Um, and I suppose second to that would be, where would you place your sensors in that environment? So one of the things we find with concessions is because they are a unique environment. We specialize in, uh, we specialize in using sensors to measure the volume of flow through the overall department store and then the conversion to that particular concession stand. So it's a mix of different technology sensing types to get, up, to get an overall picture. Uh, we have worked with concessions before, yes. Do you have many difficulties with, the, with your installations in department stores? Uh, when you're dealing primarily with a concession holder? So the easy part uh, of our solution is that we've actually intentionally designed it to be plug and play. Yeah. So you'd walk in the door and you'd literally, as long as you have permission from the department store, be able to plug in our sensors into the power. We wouldn't require any internet integration or any further integration. It's now time for the judges to decide who they think is the right fit for Charlotte Tilbury. So guys, Two very good startups, again, two very different businesses, um, solving different business needs. One very much campaignable, but one actually, um, you know, moving beyond the cliche of the term big data and actually enabling retailers um, to use it. What are your views, Mark? I'm going to sway on the side of Uzi, yeah. and more because they bring online methodologies that we're used to conversion, et cetera, split testing. I, I, I love bringing that to the high street and bringing it to whether it's a concession, whether it's a retailer. And you know, if you can do that better, optimize, optimize, do what you do better and make more money from it, then grow your business. It's a no brainer for me. The window to install. Yeah. Imagine, yeah. you know, a retailer, imagine you know, a retailer getting hold of that information. Yeah. It's, it's one that you could see in a, in a couple of years is just, is just hidden under the skin of every business. Yeah. I think shopping from Instagram is great and it's a great press story, but there are other people enabling that at the moment. So to me, that's not new. Um, I also think having to leverage uh, a brand's existing followers is potentially a negative. You know, buying makeup is a very confusing journey. You need help. You need someone to tell you which formula is right for you, which color is right for you. 
Um, and I think they could really benefit from that data to make even that one particular concession more effective because Selfridges has so much footfall that that could be a mini campaign in itself that I think would be very uh, positive for them. Gravel's presented a great case. It's very much a campaign solution, whereas uh, VC feels like a long-term business solution. All agreed then? Yeah. Guys, thank you very much for coming back. I think you both provided a fantastic idea, concept for Charlotte Tilbury. Both of you have amazing businesses, so it was actually quite a difficult decision. Uh, we've decided to go for a ViewZ today. Um, Charlotte Tilbury does have a particular concession challenge, and Vuzi's uh, idea and model kind of resonates with that very well. Fantastic. Uh, it's a great opportunity for a startup like ours. Uh, uh, we're, I'm absolutely thrilled. Congratulations to our winner, Vuzi, and a special thank you to our runner up, Gravel, for taking part. The judges were so impressed with the entrepreneur's pitch, Odira was awarded the best overall pitch of the day. Vuzi win a month's membership with workspace provider WeWork. Thanks for watching TechX Media. To find out more or get in touch, please visit seventhingsmedia.com forward slash techxmedia.